Hey guys, welcome back to the shop for another week of SNS. We're we're at episode 171, and I think I've got another week full of all kind of mix of content for you once again. So we're going to continue on with our with our short clips. I've got several of those that I'm going to share with you this week, and we've got several viewer mail that's come in. As we always try to share that, we've got a lot of nice stuff that's come in. One of those viewer gifts consists of a, a really nice micrometer, so we're going to check that out and actually have a light, a, a closer look at it and see how it actually works. So it's a new mic that I that I do not have, and I'm pretty excited to to have this because I've seen it before and I've never had one. So we're going to check that out. By the way, last week I apologize about the scratchy audio. Right here on the computer, I have this uh, Linksky's wireless adapter that I just plug directly into the top of the computer and that's where I get my Wi-Fi out here for the computer and this right here interferes with the microphone that mic right there and if that's plugged in that you hear that that's what that scratchy noise is and sometimes I get down out here and I sit down start the camera and start talking to you and I just totally forget about that thing sitting up here so I apologize about that it's happened more than once and it'll probably happen again but it really sucks to, to film everything and then find out that you have scratchy audio and I didn't want to retake all that stuff. I like to make one take and, and try to move on. <laughs> so that's what we're going to do. Hopefully this week it won't be scratchy. But yeah, we got some things I'm going to share. And then we've got, I've got a video that's going to come out after this SNS that's a new project in the shop. It's a repair job. A hydraulic cylinder that Fernando brought me, it's off his tractor. I've been working on it. We got the rod right there, so we're going to be doing some machine work on that, and and we're going to be putting it back together. And I've got to do some welding on it as well. So we'll we'll probably have two episodes of that because because uh, of all the content. So just be on the lookout for that. Last week, Abby and I went and did our little local exploration that we try to do every once in a while, and I've got video content of that. Hopefully, you've already seen some of that, and that's something that we we do and enjoy to try to do when we can, especially like a Sunday. We try to we try to step away from the work and have a day to relax and enjoy ourselves, you know, and, and get out and do something. So we're going to try to do some more of that here this summer, and. I'll bring you some more of that adventurous content around here and i hope you guys are enjoying that if you haven't watched some of those i highly encourage you to go check some of those out you may like something about those videos over there <laughs> I also want to give you guys a real quick reminder of the brand new t-shirt campaign for the Booth Machine Shop t-shirts over there at tblaster.com. You can swing over there and pick you up one. we got two campaigns. One is for a pocket tee like this here. It'll have a Shop Life logo with the logo on the back and then you'll have a graphic tee that has the Booth Machine graphic on the front with the really nice Monarch picture there. So I'll have the links in the video description down below. Click on those and it'll take you right to it. So. Go check those out and, and uh, pick you up a new shirt. So a couple of quick mentions, some of this viewer mail. I got this nice package in from Dake. And if you don't know who Dake is, they, they build really high-end hydraulic presses and they actually have some other equipment too, metalworking equipment. But 
about a month ago, probably a little more than a month ago, we, we got us a brand new Dake hydraulic press at, at the shop. It's a 75 ton and it's, it's one that I've been wanting for a long time and I was actually able to hand pick that one and, and we, we were able to add it to the budget because of our pressing needs there in the, in the cylinder shop and as well as doing broaching and that kind of stuff. So they allowed me to pick one out like I wanted and I got it because of the, the, fast, the fast travel speed of the ram. It, it, it advances at 30 inches a minute. So it, it speeds up broaching and, and pressing operations around the shop. So we use it also for pressing bushings and bearings and the end of eyes and, and stuff like that and any kind of just general purpose pressing needs. But anyway, Dake had uh, really enjoyed the pictures that I had shared out there on Instagram about the press. You know, the day we got it, I shared something out there and tagged them in it. So they sent me a hat. All right, so we got us a new Dake hat. And we got a couple of little things in here too. We got some, these are some magnets here. And also some stickers. And a new t-shirt. But unfortunately they didn't, they didn't send me a machinist size t-shirt. This is only a 2X, so a little bit tight for me. But hey, maybe one day I can fit into it. <laughs> but anyway, thanks Dake if you're watching. I don't know if you guys watch my videos, but it's always cool getting some um, some official gear from a manufacturer. <laughs> One of my viewers named James Gable sent me some stuff from their area and he is from Greenfield, Illinois. So we've got this Country Bob's all-purpose sauce. Looks like some barbecue sauce. And also this brand here, Man's Ribeye Seasoning. And in his letter, he says that this is an excellent seasoning. They use it on all kinds of stuff, not just ribeyes. So I haven't checked it out yet, but I always, always like trying different seasonings whenever I'm doing my cooking for, for both meats and vegetables and potatoes and stuff like that. So always nice to get something from a different area of the country that you don't normally see down here. So that was pretty cool. Thank you very much, James, for the season, and I really appreciate that, and I look forward to trying those out, okay? <laughs> So you might remember a week or two ago, I was talking about the camera problems I've been having again with the with my GoPro, thinking that it's the USB port. This is the camera that I used to always use for uh, what this camera is doing now. So here is the mic that I'm using for the uh, the, the gimbal mount. This is a Saramonic, and it plugs into the side there. The, uh, the USB port on the side and I think that this USB port is not working correctly because sometimes when I'm using that wire plugged into this USB port I, that's when I get that bad audio so I switched cameras out that one's been doing fine and this mic has been working good so far for that camera but anyway I had mentioned I was gonna pick up a used one around town and one of my viewers, his name is David Lewis, and he's known as Veteran Bicycle. So you may see his, his name in the, the comments. He always leaves comments. He had messaged me on both Instagram and, and my Facebook page and said that he had basically a brand new Hero 4 Black that he wanted me to have because it was one that he had bought, and I guess he never really used it. He was going to use it. He said he never got around to using it. So he wanted to contribute that to the shop here in my efforts to uh, help me out. And that's what he's done. So we've got the box here with all the all the little parts and the goodies. So this is the, the Hero 4 black camera. That's basically, it's brand new. And then all the other little components that 
that goes along with it whenever you buy one. He also has this uh, frame mount, which is what I used to always use, the frame mount. And I liked it because it that was before I started using the road mic. And it's open on the side here so you can plug in your, you know, your cords and your accessories to it. This is an updated frame that I, before the ones that I had, you can actually spring it open like that and then latch it back, back down. So very nice stuff. Uh, I like my GoPros. I know people have an opinion about the, which cameras you use, but you know, honestly, the, the GoPros have been working really well for me. The setup that I made to hold this camera and the mic has worked very well for me. It works great over on the machine, so I can take that Noga arm and move that camera anywhere I want to, move the mic where I want to, and it doesn't pick up all that vibration like like uh, other like DSLR type cameras do when they're over on the machine. So it's a very nimble, very lightweight, small camera that brings you an excellent picture, and I personally really like it. So. So far, they're working really good for me. And with that mic set up, I'll, I was afraid to make a switch to the Hero 5 because they changed the USB port. So it's going to be a whole new setup with that. And I wanted to just try to go with the, with this generation with like a Hero 4 because of the this particular USB port that's in there. So that's why I was looking for a used one. So there's still a lot of them out there. And uh, But anyway, David, I really appreciate you sending me the the, the camera right here I do plan on putting it to use and I have not even turned it on yet or anything so I am gonna play with it when I get some time and and make sure everything's working right and we'll put it to use around the shop making videos for you so thank you very much David I really appreciate the new GoPro So I got a nice red Starrett box in from Mike Rickett and he is from Charlotte, North Carolina and he was he was messaging me and telling me that he had a nice red box coming my way that he wanted me to have. He also sent this, I'll go ahead and talk about this, we got some ghost pepper sauce that he wanted me to have. It, the brand is called Tropical Pepper Company and this is supposed to be pretty dang hot. I was looking to see where it's made. It says product of Costa Rica. And it's got a scale there on the side of the uh, hotness level. And it says this one's deadly. Mike was talking about in his letter that, or his email, that it's best to just mix this in something, not, not put it on something. So if you're making you some chili or some gumbo or something like that, maybe put a drop or two in this to help give it a little bit of spice to it, you know? so. I like my stuff hot, but I don't like it to the point where my mouth is on fire and it's burning, it's uncomfortable, but uh, I'm Southern and I, and I like Cajun food, so I do like spicy food as well. So anyway, that's pretty cool, Mike. I really appreciate it and we will try that out. <laughs> but I wanted to go ahead and show you this mic. So this is a mic that he had picked up that he wanted me to have. Uh, it, it didn't come with a case. so. He actually purchased this case from Starrett because he wanted to have a nice jewelry case for it. <laughs> and I'm sure it comes with the box too when you buy the case. So this is a Starrett number 221 micrometer. And this one's a little bit special. And I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna zoom you in with the Sony here and we're gonna have a, a lot closer look at this, this micrometer and how it works and we'll talk about it. This is a new one for me that I had never used. I've seen it in the catalogs, but never had my hands on one before. So it was really nice to get this number 221. And it's what's unique about it is the tents are red on the friction thimble barrel right here. And you can see that barrel moves and you can see this one moving too. So I had to do a little bit of research and he sent me, <clears throat> he had sent me some some info on how to read this micrometer from Starrett. And he also sent this info here too, if I can, if I can get to it, about the, the inventor. And his name was A.G. Hagstrom. He's the one who invented this back in 
1940 and some information about the micrometer right there. So very cool, very interesting stuff to read. And this is gonna be a very, very nice mic to use. It's very beautiful. So let me get you set up. We're gonna zoom in and we're gonna have a closer look at this 221. So we got you zoomed in on that nice Starrett number 221 mic. I'm using my Wilton baby bullet to hold that because I don't have an official stand. By the way, I did pick up one as Mike had suggested, get a, an actual stand to use this type of mic. I found one on eBay, offered them $35 for it, and uh, they took it. So I got a nice Starrett indicator stand coming. So for now, we'll use the Wilton. We'll go over the mic a little bit and talk about it because it's the first time that I've used one and you know learning how it functions and I, and I think I have a good understanding of it now. So it reads here like a normal micrometer would but you have your friction thimble here that rotates. We'll just kind of hold the barrel there the, and you see where the black numbers are those rotate as you're rotating the the fine friction thimble which is this is where your tenth this, the red numbers is where your tenth readings are going to be. And there's, there's actually four quadrants on there. So there's four zeros and then there's zero through nine so that, you know, you can read it on the front of this barrel or any, anywhere on the mic that you want to. So we're going to use a gauge block. Now this is not any kind of high-end fancy gauge block. This is just a, an import. Point one zero zero eight. Now I may be warming it up with my fingers a little bit, so let's go ahead and I already cleaned the the uh, the mic faces there before we started this. Okay, so we got her and we got her in there. And you see everything moving. So this is a uh, what we say. 0.1008 and we can look at the the black numbers right here and it looks like it's reading one thousandths over right there so what you do to get your actual tenth readings is you take and you rotate it you see it's on it's lined up on that line there it's a zero well you move it you move it 10 numbers there so that it seats here perfectly, okay? Then once you do that, then you look back down here and you wanna line up the zero perfectly in line with that horizontal line. So right about there. All right, so now the zero looks like it's lined up. And then you come over here and you look at your red numbers and you count that up. And that's gonna be your 10th reading. So let me get it positioned again and I've got it it looks like nine it looks like it's lined up on the number nine right there so I don't know if the if the mic is off one or two tenths of calibration or the gauge block or what but that's how you read it right there so if we if we're gonna assume that this mic is reading correctly when we go back up to that zero see you just rotate it and don't let it snap back. You always keep it under tension and slowly back it off. We're going to line it back up with this zero. And I'm getting between the eight and the nine now on that. Let's see, I dropped it down a little bit. So nine tenths, I'm going to call it nine tenths. So you add that to this value here. So that would be 0 0.1009. And when you're through taking your reading, you back it off slowly and don't let it snap back because it is it is under like a spring pressure there so that's it that's how you use the number 221 and I would like to go ahead and have a, a have this mic calibrated and make sure that it is reading like it like it should so I'm gonna work on that but Mike I really appreciate that that is a that is a very nice and beautiful mic and I look forward to 
practicing using that and actually put it to use around here. So thank you very much for sending that in. I got another repeat job that I'm going to do. I've showed these before. These are some spacers that go to an exhaust manifold where a uh, custom exhaust that's being made. <clears throat> and they have to be fate, they have to be parted off. They're 20 millimeters wide right now. And the, the width that they need to be is 9 16 or I believe it's like 14.3 millimeters. So I showed this before. I got this little mandrel, this little fixture that I have made up for it and what i'm going to do is set my tool first offset it the right width and then it'll it'll be there i'll set a zero over here and we'll clamp these on there using the washer and a bolt and part them off there's a little shoulder inside there that that washer pulls up against and it also registers on the the shoulder here I've already got the distance set. I'm going to use some coolant this time. I've already got that zero set so I can come back to it. I'm going to go ahead and chamfer it while it's in there. Fourteen point three, five sixty three. Okay. Try to use constant feed pressure on that stainless so that you don't burn your carbide up by letting it rub. I just visually and use my finger to, to check it make sure that I get that edge good whenever I deburr it all right so two more to do just like that I guess uh, what we'll do is go ahead and we'll check this one and see if our zero repeated on our 
on our mag indicator. I'd say we're within the range that we need to be right there. Just to verify what's going on on these shafts, that's a bearing journal that was that I undercut about five thousandths, and then we sent them out to have them hard chrome plated, and then once they're built up, they sent them back, and then I I set them up and I grind them with the tool post grinder there. That particular journal finishes at five inches point zero zero two. shots for all my safety Nazis out there. 